Hello and welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Volume 1, Episode 27, Most Hits Allowed. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. If you've been following Pro Yaku at all this past week, then you've probably heard that Chunichi's Daisuke Yamai threw a no-hitter against the Yokohama Bay Stars on Friday, June 28th, 2013. But, did you hear about Yokohama's starter of that game? Uh, Shoichi Ino allowed seven runs on seven hits in just the first inning to Chunichi. Then... He stayed the rest of the game to throw a total of six innings, allowing just four more hits and one run. So, you know, I've been thinking. There have been 77 pitchers who have thrown a total of 88 no-hitters throughout NPB's history. But how many pitchers have been tagged for more than 10 hits in a game? Well, at least this season. And how did they fare? Let's explore what pitchers have been doing when being hit in 2013. The first thing I did was query all pitchers who allowed at least 10 hits in a given game. Now, what stands out? Uh, The first thing that I notice is that Masahiro Tanaka, or Makun, on April 23rd, against Oryx, managed to get a win despite allowing 15 hits over eight innings. And the 15 hits is the most so far this season that a pitcher has given up. Yet, there he is with a win. Otherwise, on April 2nd, Yakult's Kyohei Muranaka Uh, managed to hold Hiroshima scoreless through seven and a third innings, despite allowing ten hits. And, you know, that's pretty impressive as well. Several others have held opponents to two runs or less while scattering ten hits, and Nakten's Manabu Mima is the only pitcher to hold the opposition to two runs while allowing eleven hits or more. But, you know, I noticed that these high-hitting outings are over a good number of innings for the most part. There are a few where the number of hits exceeds the number of outs that a pitcher managed to get, but not that many. Let's have a closer look at the rate of hits per innings. We get to a good manageable size of results when I require that a pitcher has managed to get at least four outs, that is, one and a third innings, and allowed as many hits or more per out. Now, the worst outing to date by this criteria this season was Yakult's Masanori Ishikawa, who allowed eight runs on nine hits over one and one-third innings against Hanshin on May 3rd. That's a rate of six and a quarter hits per inning. Unsurprisingly, he got the loss. Eno's 11 hits last Friday were spread out over six innings, so that game doesn't show up here. But his May 31st loss to Doctin, where he gave up seven runs on six hits through the first two or one and two third innings, shows up as. 3.6 3.6 hits per inning, and ranks him fifth worst so far this season. Otherwise, I notice a lot of relievers allowing four hits on four outs, getting by without a decision. But as the number of hits increases with the number of outs, the number of losses also starts increasing. This is mainly because starters tend to be given a little bit more leeway than relievers, I believe. But you know, there isn't a single win in this list, whereas Makun show that one could still win, even giving up 15 hits. So, let's drill down a little farther by loosening up the innings pitch condition to just one or more, 
So we're just basically subtracting one out. And here we get a much longer list of players. So, you know, and that's mainly because a lot of relievers are just being put in for one inning, regardless of how poorly they may do. So, Yokohama's Kai Win Ching had that big first inning misstart last Thursday that really stands out. We actually came back and won that one, though, so he's left with no decision. The losses or no decision continue until we get to Lotte's Naoya Masada on May 12th. against Octin. He allowed one run on three hits, pitching the ninth inning, but capitalized on a two-run bases-loaded Sayonara double by Toshiaki Imae for the win. The only other winner who allowed three hits on three outs was Yakult's Taichi Ishiyama, who, on Children's Day, May 5th, allowed two runs to Hanshin to tie the game up in the eighth inning just to get the win when the Swallows scored two in the top of the ninth at Koshien. Well, that is a bit of a surprise. Allowing a hit per out is resulting in a lot of runs. Well, maybe it's not quite that big of a surprise. However, you know, considering that double plays do help pitchers quite often get out of such jams, having so many zeros just kind of strikes me as a little more surprising than I would have expected. Relievers on this list, of course, are not being penalized that often compared to starters when it comes to getting a decision. So... What stands out for you? I'm making all of this data available on a Google spreadsheet, which you can get to via one of the links at either the Google Plus ProYaku community or on JapaneseBaseball.com in the blog Bayside West, Yokohama. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. Coming up tomorrow, July 1st, will be the next edition of the Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast. I'm informed that John had a sit-down with SoftBank's Brian Lahair this week. Otherwise, the saga of Ballgate continues, the All-Star teams have been picked, and the two are planning on discussing Yamai's no-no from last Friday. Your satisfaction is guaranteed, or your money back. Tune in to this week's episode. And with that, I submit to you this week's ProYaku Report. Thank you for joining me. Until next week, take care.